Yeah, so I'm, uh, I guess I'm, I'm James McRae. I'm, I guess I'm the odd duck in the lineup in that I'm a software rather than hardware focused company. But the, you could have shoved me in the middle to blend in, but no, it's okay. So you have your family. Right, right, right. But um, anyways, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Um, yeah, so the company that I'm with is Janus VR, and we're a software company focused uh, on creating solutions that are at the, at the intersection of virtual reality and the web as we know it. And I'll be presenting our vision of the world within the web. Uh, so first, I'm going to begin with uh, an introduction of like a, a history, a brief timeline, something akin to the looking glass presentation a little bit. But let's start with virtual reality uh, and, and what's kind of happened through history. Um, sort of one of the, the, the pivotal things moving forward was uh, Ivan Sutherland's uh, Sword of Damocles. Uh, this was back in 1970, I think it was prior to 1970, in fact. So it's, it's funny to think about that virtual reality as a technology uh, has existed you know, for almost half a century already. And moving forward, um, we see the next iteration of this as, you know, uh, Jaron Lanier of VPL Research, uh, you know, was another step forward here. Uh, interestingly, there's a quote by one of the inaugural issues of Wired Magazine where uh, Nicholas uh, Negroponte said, I expect that within the next five years, people, more than one in ten people will wear head-mounted computer displays while traveling in buses, trains, and planes. So, you know, as we all know, this didn't quite go the way that it was planned then, but it's uh, still an interesting thing to think about. And then again, uh, you know, now we have this more recent movement of virtual reality that's being signaled that's the result of innovations uh, definitely made at the hardware level for sure. Um, all the innovations that are kind of translating over from mobile and that are applicable with virtual reality devices that are coming. So it's a really exciting time. Uh, now in parallel, let's, let's take a look at the web and the evolution of the web. Uh, you have really early systems of you know, networking the first computers together. One example of this is ARPANET, again, half a century ago. If we fast forward one decade from there and look at the evolution of that technology, we move on to the world of you know, the World Wide Web and the, you know, the declaration of languages like HTML by you know, famous people like uh, Tim Berners-Lee. And the people who manufactured or, or were the first creators of like what, what an internet browser would be back then, uh, notably you know Mosaic and later Netscape, uh, and you know these were done by a group of people, including uh, Mark Andreessen. So let's fast forward you know 20 more years. What's what's the next paradigm? What's the next evolutionary step here on this technology? And more importantly, you know what about that combination of technologies? How will they influence each other? So, you know, in that lower right quadrant there, it's, you know, it's a bit of a question mark. It's a bit of a Wild West situation now. Um, what is, what's the solution to come? So to frame the problem again, um, you know, the internet is, is this incredible technology, allows us to create and share on a daily basis. But largely, you know, it's, it's, it's optimum, you know, one of the optimum purposes is it, is it actually allows people to share documents, you know, flat, flat information with one another. So, you know, in a more practical sense, when we look at merging the two, those two technologies, you know, the internet and the virtual reality, you know, we quickly realize that, you know, the naive combination of taking that 2D rectangle, as we know it, of the web, and placing it into a 3D space you know, is, is kind of a naive solution. Um, it's, it's, it's unimaginative, um, and it's actually in, ineffective from a user interface standpoint. Certainly, uh, you know, much more innovation, innovative solutions could be done. So, you know, it's an open problem. So, you know, where do we look uh, for inspiration for a solution? Uh, in my own case, and, you know, probably like many others, I think of these, you know, uh, canonical science fiction novels of the past, notably, you know, Neil Stevenson, William Gibson, even more recently, uh, you know, Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. And, you know, what these books and, you know, the imagination of these authors share is this notion of a collective universe, a virtual universe that we could all you know, uh, tunnel into that was this alternate reality or metaverse, um, and you know the applications in these in these stories are numerous, including education and you know all manner of things.
you. So uh, that video just illustrates that uh, our own approach, our solution here, is actually to reimagine you know, websites themselves as three-dimensional spaces. And we reimagine the hyperlink uh, as a portal you know, or, or door or gateway by, gateway by which you can seamlessly traverse space to space. So, uh, you know, take the Lego website or something, some example like that. Um, you know, using the analogy of a 2D document, how you could bring this to 3D. Uh, you know, looking at a flat document, that's an experience that's best done alone. Um, since we're leaping into these 3D spaces, it, you know, kind of begs the use of avatars, you know, a, a digital representation of oneself. Uh, and then beyond that, we can start to socialize, collaborate, collaboratively build the environments and use things together. Um, and we also have this portal-based system uh, with which you can move from place to place. So you know, this is. I, I should uh, preface this, or, or I, I have humility. I'm not. I'm not actually selling this as the be-all, end-all solution. But um, I guess you know the, the point that I'm trying to make is uh, this is a space that begs for innovation, and you know, and we're one of a number of solutions um, in the space. Uh, let's discuss challenges. Um, challenges of facing this problem. Uh, certainly, some of the ones that that we're dealing with uh, in our own company. So there's you know there's a, there's a there's a long list here. It's probably non-exhaustive. Uh, you know the first of which is the, the PR VR or physical and virtual disconnect. There's a fundamental disconnect that you know in the virtual environment you can have a boundless space, but you are bounded in your physical world, unable to actually move correspondingly with the virtual environment. Things like that. Uh, the senses that we can actually bring into these experiences. You know currently we're playing with sight and sound and to a very limited extent touch, but you know, how do you deeper, you know, connect the senses and make it more and more immersive, the experience? Uh, the third point is the, you know, the internet of things, and I'm sure that should resonate with the crowd here that, uh, you know, as innovations continue, we're finding, you know, embedded systems in more and more places in the home or, you know, in the vehicle you're driving. Um, you know, how might we actually, uh, yeah, utilize or interface? You know, what kind of visual representations can we come up with for, for these kinds of embedded devices? I mean, you, you know, it just, it just begs, <laughs> for you know, for, for like really awesome examples, like a car that could report exactly you know where the problem was, and you have some kind of augmented display that actually shows you where on the car the you know the problem is, or something like that. Um, you know, again to echo uh, yeah challenges from previous presentations. Um, you know, there's this gamut of input devices and output displays that has this kind of multiplicative. Uh, um, challenge about it in that you need to invest, you know, so there's currently the Oculus Rift, there's the HTC Vive, there's now PSVR, Google's announced Daydream View, there's Samsung Gear VR, there's, you know, which of all these different, you know, output displays and input devices are you going to support? Can you support all of them? Can you create a overall interaction that uh, can kind of coalesce and kind of be consistent between that variety of input and output uh, hardware? Uh, there's the issue of web languages and 3D formats, HTML, VRML, JavaScript, you know, these are coming from the past, more legacy, but being brought forward. Um, you know, open, you know, committee forums, formats like GLTF, there are, you know, proposed, um, you know, languages for the web beyond our, you know, our own, of course, A-Frame, React VR, and then you have Web VR, which is, you know, to extend you know, existing browsers implementations, uh, JavaScript-based libraries, they'll actually allow, in, you know, interfacing with that VR hardware. So there's, it is again the Wild West, and there's lots moving, but there's lots of space for everyone. And then lastly, you have uh, the issue of legacy content. How are you going to preserve that? How are you going to actually be able to bring that into the platform? So these are all, you know, a number of challenges that, uh, yeah, th that we face. But that said, the, the you know the potential applications you know are you know as, as diverse as one's imagination with such a system. For instance, you have these traditional examples you hear about in architecture, you know, real estate, travel, tourism, things of this nature. Um, you know, to be able to create virtual environments is allows one to you know as, as an outlet for self-expression. You know, just beyond the written word, you can actually create these environments and experiences. Uh, naturally, you know, as people communicate, there will be advertising and commerce-like applications. 
you know, you, the, the shopping experience, of course, can be, you know, innovated upon. And then lastly, you know, obviously we have the more gaming-oriented and entertainment-oriented uh, applications, of course, fall out of this. Uh, just one of which was just a brief highlight was, you know, maybe it's a, you know, a 360 rock concert where immersive content is moving all around you, but you're also in there with your friends all sharing uh, live in that moment together. So, you know, this was actually something we did uh, back in January of two, 2015 that, uh, it was, it, was really, it was really awesome, it was a great success. Um, on the subject of platform, uh, again, I just stress that the importance of uh, building upon all current web content, you, you really want to use all of that, you know, the richness and all the content of the web as a starting point and actually kind of think of it as you know, building blocks upon which you further enrich and make more immersive um, the experience and you know, you know, extend it by adding new richer formats that you know, that are amenable to, the web, um, to, the, to an, an immersive web like photogrammetry, videogrammetry, things of that nature. Uh, and again, it's important to stress that, you know, the argument is not being made that we're saying it should all be 3D websites and that's, that's just it or, you know, that's the optimal presentation of any kind of content. Obviously, the optimal presentation of the content is based on the nature of the content. If I'm going to read something, I probably am happy with a 2D display for that. So. Uh, if anything, we're only making the claim that you should use the right, you know, dimensionality based on based on the, the type of media you're digesting. Uh, I'll go over this quickly, but really, I think a future browser, browser of the future, is going to incorporate all five of these elements shown. Uh, you know, being collaborative, highly immersive, multidimensional, social, and then having all browsing functionality that people expect. Uh, our companies produce this, and I. You know, to my knowledge, we are the first browser, you know, VR-ready internet browser that actually takes these five elements and brings them to get together, and we are deployed and we're out there today. So that platform, you know, beyond just the client software, that software the end user uses, uh, you know, is, a, is an executable, or they can actually use a WebGL-based version more recently. Uh, so you have your choice. There's server software. Um, you know, HTTP, for instance, doesn't handle presence and allow people to communicate. Uh, so you need presence. Um, language support, Janus VR exporters, letting people use the, you know, the, the, the production tools that they're comfortable with, uh, whether that's you know, a game engine or that's uh, you know, 3D modeling software, whatever it is. You need to make it easy. And then uh, an ability for people to host these, this content somewhere. And we have a really strong, healthy community that uh, is really attracted to it and has, has gravitated towards our product, and that's evident by you know the showcase of experiences I can show, and also some of the metrics that we've been tracking in terms of their usage lately. You know, 70,000 downloads, 450,000 sessions, active subreddit with over 1,000 users, you know, lots of authored content on the platform, and I'm actually just going to show a quick uh, one-minute promotional video that uh, showcases that diversity of content that they've been creating. Uh, so I, I'm not trying to be salesy, but it's sort of our. Uh, you know, like the, a, a pitch video of sorts. So uh, I guess uh, to summarize uh, the vision of our company and what we're about, uh, we think of the internet as it exists today as 
you know, a cyber or digital extension of this physical reality that we live in today. And we're highly focused on creating software solutions at the intersection, you know, of, uh, of the web and a virtual reality. And we're really aiming to make, you know, the, the vision of this immersive web that everyone can, can use, uh, you know, a reality. So um, we have a deployed, you know, 3D collaborative VR internet browser now. Um, so we can download image. And uh, I would encourage anyone who's uh, interested in, in, in trying it out to please do so. Uh, it's freely available, janusvr.com. And we now have a you know, web VR based implementation uh, that you can check out at web.janusvr.com or any web author of their own can actually freely kind of plug in our technology to create like a more rich, immersive uh, website. And lastly, uh, we also have these live demos that uh, for anyone who's interested, I'm really happy to show you and you can try it out firsthand. Um, so, uh, sorry for going a little over time. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Very, very well, thank you. Um, just one quick question from me. So, so with VR, is that uh, friend, foe, you mentioned an integration at the end. Web VR. Web, web VR is that <laughs> very much friend. Very much friend. Yeah. So you know, web, web VR is is not any uh, single individual. It's it's what it is. It's a coalescing of the industry to describe a standard for how uh, one might use the you know the browsers that be, uh, and, you know, and provide a solution so that at the least that they can get those browsers interacting with virtual reality hardware. You know, and bringing WebGL based content. You know, piping it through the headset, being able to read from the sensors, and uh, have these experiences. But uh, you know, it's the web and the creation of standards. And everything is a is a wild is a wild west. It's it's a large ocean of things, um, and it's it's not going to be maybe any single company. But uh, you're going to see a myriad of different solutions and and uh, you know, uh, proposed yeah specs change whether they're you know with, with the language or how you know the connectivity and policies relating to privacy and security and you know it, so. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, it was a W3C event actually that was held, you know, just a week ago. You know that uh, you know that was on the very subject of having people from industry come together and collectively, uh, you know, share their thoughts on the development of this of this vision of the you know the immersive web. Um, but yeah, just to be you know, if you're being pedantic, web VR refers more narrowly to you know a, a library that uh, or, or a standard that people can conform to, so that if you are a uh, you know VR web developer. And you're using a supporting browser, a web VR browser. Uh, it'll work for you on that on that on that browser. Yeah. One question. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, keyboard. You know, typing in the letters that we want sure. is a challenge. But you haven't mentioned how you solved it. Um, Oculus VR has so many buttons. Mm -hmm. um, how do you solve it, or how do you plan to solve it if you haven't already? It's a really interesting question, and it, yeah, it, it actually highlights, you know, one of the challenges. Uh, you know, when, when they established the 2D web, they didn't actually have quite have the huge amount of devices available. I mean, they're targeting a keyboard and a mouse. It was, it was pretty narrow there. So, um, you know, again, I can I can discuss the solutions that you know that that we proposed and we implemented and are thinking about, but you know, that does not. It, you know, my word is definitely not law. Anyone can innovate and come up with a more innovative solution. But you know, the sorts of approaches you're seeing taken are the form of virtual keyboards. You know, the idea being that in the virtual space you have these these keys laid out and you can kind of punch them. Uh, you know, ergonomics. You know, kind of be ignored. But for simple things like search terms, small queries like that, it works pretty reasonably. Uh, we have something I can show you with that. Um, and then obviously you're looking at more of like a, you know a speech to text. Um, kind of application where you know you, you search or something is driven by voice. I mean, this is ideal. These headsets actually contain microphones inside them that listen to what you say. So if this is robust enough, that's another pathway. Yeah. Great. Wonderful, James. Thank you very okay. much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.